Imagine, if you will, the ability to put your own TurboGrafx-16 games and PC Engine games on your own cards. Well, that is now a reality thanks to our friends at RetroStage. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. In order to do this, you'll need a few things, including the actual game cards, right? You will need a Retro Blaster. You'll need the TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine adapter for the Retro Blaster. A vibrating Pikachu. I'm just kidding, you don't actually need this. And some legally owned TurboGrafx-16 games <laughs> that you can dump. I couldn't even say that with a straight face. You just need some TurboGrafx-16 ROMs. But if you happen to have the cards, I can show you how to dump these off to put them on these cards too, if you'd like. Now I have a PC Engine CD for my home console, and then I have this guy. You know, I take about on rare occasions, but got one of these too. This would be a Turbo Express, which lets you play the same games that you would play on a home console, play it, right on your uh, portable system. Now, so I'm not using six AA batteries on this thing. I still have my adapter there. Take one of these guys, you pop them in, and I'll show you how to program any game you want to play on here. You just turn it on like that. It should just fire up just like that. Now this one, of course, is Bonk 3, which is a game I don't have, nor can I afford. However, if you just want to play it physically, it's a great way to do it. Did I say I don't have it? I meant to say that there's a backup somewhere. Of course I legally own the copies of these ROMs. Yeah. And again, because I own a US Turbo Express, and then a Japanese PC Engine CD. Whether you have US games or import games, you can also dump the ROMs and then put them back onto one of these cards as the other language. Now, these are not interchangeable. You cannot play US games on your Japanese system, for instance. However, I can dump, let's say, Altered Beast. This is the Altered Beast, uh, the Japanese version. Um, I can dump the ROM and then put it back onto it so it plays on a U.S. system, which makes it very cool, especially if there's, like, English language translation patches, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, let's show you how to do that. First thing we got to do with the Retro Blaster is replace the adapter for the TurboGrafx-16. Now, there's no real easy way to do this. That's kind of easy, easy, easy. Gently, gently, gently. There we go. Just like that. And this is your base Retro Blaster uh, that will accept all of these other adapters too. And they have a lot to choose from with NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, this is also Game Boy Advance, this is your uh, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and Sega Genesis. Uh, the Sega Genesis one is down there, just off of, just off the screen. Um, so with these, you can uh, program your own games onto them. Uh, using their boards, you can also dump ROMs onto them. So if you happen to find like a prototype, for instance, I've used this for dumping prototypes. So then very simply, we have the TurboGrafx-16 adapter right here, and we want to make sure that this little little notch matches up with that little notch right there. Now with all these pins, you want to make sure they go in all the right places here. So I'm just going to make sure that they all line up before I start squishing them into place. That looks pretty good there. You know, and it's, it's, it's a pretty simple doing here. Just like that. Yeah, that's all it is. And then the turbo card here inserts just like such. Very cool. And then you got your USB, uh, was it B on the back there? It's like your USB, whatever, what's that, what's that USB called? USB B? I don't know. When I pop this in, it may just light up blue. I don't know, I don't have my computer turned on just yet, but... Oh, there you go, see? A little flash there. <laughs> Alright, let's program some games onto this thing. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a US game into a Japanese game. And here's a couple of games I happen to have here. Like I said, I don't have the biggest collection here. Um, yeah, Dead Moon's pretty good. Well, let's, let's do Bonk's Adventure, only because with Bonk's Adventure, if it was the Japanese version, it would be PC Gaijin or whatever, so we'll just, we'll just do the classic here, Bonk's Adventure. So Bonk's Adventure, gonna slide it in just like that. Now let's kind of place it right there. You can kind of see it. Oh, let's not whitewash it here. Okay, so it's there. You can kind of see it there. And, uh, here I have Retro Blaster 2.1.3C, also important, version 2.8. When I first got this device, I did try making a game using uh, firmware 2.6. It did not work. When I upgraded 2.8, it worked. Go figure. Um, there is a step-by-step -step both document, Word document, and video on how to download these programs and get them working from the Retro Blaster website. And here you can see you got you know Nintendo, Super Nintendo. It has all the options for you depending on which module you're using. And uh, and then here's your your TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine one. As simple as is ByteSwap for PC Engine, that's how you make games import or not. PC Engine, TurboGrafx-16, import, not import. Very cool. Um, I'm going to dump the ROM first, and then we're going to write it as a, as a thing that will play in my PC Engine uh, CD over here. So this is a Who card. This is not a PC Engine game. This is a Who card. And we'll, and we'll do the opposite, too. We'll do the opposite, too. But first, let's do this, just so you can see how it's done. Uh, dump the TurboGrafx-16 Who card. Just making sure here. 
Um, this is bonk, and you can see a couple of other projects I was just working on a second ago. Uh, make sure I can see where the save button is. <laughs> there we go. All right, it's going to dump it. Uh, this won't take very long at all. That takes about a minute or so. All right, so it says, I said it takes about a minute. 16 seconds is how long it took. 16 seconds is how long it took. Now, if you're dumping a game for like the like the Nintendo 64, some 32 meg game, well, that might take, you know, 15 minutes or <laughs> something like that, a lot bigger uh, than this one. But now we're going to write it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop this game out. This game has served its purpose. Thank you very much. I'm going to place this back in my little case where it'll be safe. And I'm going to slide the new Turbo Blaster chip game into its place. It does not matter what's already on there uh, because it's going to erase it every time. It's going to erase it every time. So again, I'm going to play this. Right now it's um, set for Turbo Graphics 16, the US version. I have to click this to make it work on the Japanese system. I want, I want I'm going to play my US game on my Japanese system doing it this way. So write the ROM. And I already have it right here. Here's Bonk. Of course, I put it right in the way. Move out of the way. And open. Open, open, open. There we go. Now, the first thing it's going to do is going to start flashing. That means it's working. And then it's going to start erasing it. It's erasing it right now. It's what it's doing. It doesn't take very long at all. See, there you go. Already did the region patch as well. That's good because I'm going to play this on my PC Engine CD. And this will take about a minute. All right, so 52 seconds is what it looks like. Now, if I can do this, I'm going to not even cut from the edit. I'm going to take this out with one hand if I can. I probably should have done this before picking up the camera. That's all right. You see my messy table full of cords. I'm going to pop this in here. Hopefully it's going to be okay. I hit power. And then there you go. So now I'm playing Bonk's Adventure, the U.S. version. If it, Again, if it was the import, it would say PC, uh, uh, PC Gaijin or whatever. Um, working on my... PC Engine Duo. How cool is that? Now let's do the opposite. Let's let's do this with a Japanese game that plays on a US system. Now let's say for instance I have Altered Beast for the PC Engine, but I want to play it on my US system. Well now you can with this device. So I have this, so even though I have the little foam padding. That's right, Jared and Aaron, I still have this game. Come on now. <laughs> Glad I do, so I can use this for this uh, example. So we have, uh, we're going to dump the PC Engine game. Yeah, that's just like that. And you can call this whatever you want. doesn't really matter. I'll call it um, Fun Times in Riggs Land. It doesn't really matter what you call it. it doesn't, as long as you know where it is. Very neat. All right, so I'm going to slide this game out. Do not need this anymore. And I'm going to use the exact same game I just used for, uh, you know, for the uh, Bonk's Adventure. Because I don't need Bonk's Adventure. I want to play this. I want to play Altered Beast on my uh, Turbo Express. Again, you have to keep this unclicked, unclicked for the U.S. system. I want to write the ROM, and here it is, Fun Times in Riggsland, a.k.a. Altered Beast. This will take about a minute. Well, first it's going to erase first, and then it'll take about a minute. Well, either way, you know what I mean. There we go. All right. Whoop. Turbo Blaster powered on. There we go. Jurassic, not Jurassic, <laughs> Altered Beast <laughs> on one of these things. It's definitely not the best version of the game. But it's something that exists. If you're wondering, this is an LCD mod to uh, to the Turbo Express. So if that's if you're like, why does it look like that? I don't know. So yeah, it's 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 there. And there's not a huge community, but there are some homebrews available for the TurboGrafx-16. Some of them you can just download off the internet. That way you can play them in your Raspberry Pi. You can play them on your Mister. But you still want to play games physically. You want to play the physical game and the physical system on your physical television. But if you just want to play it anyway, and there's some great homebrews that are out there, some of them you could just download. Um, let's see if that works. Because the answer is yes, it does. That's the spoiler alert. But let's show you. Yeah, let's do a live test right now. Let's find a game that we can just download. I'm at the uh, pcengine.co.uk. There's a homebrews selection here. And that looks like F0. Who zero? Uh, I might have to look at that one here. Yeah, you know what? That F-Zero looking game. Just, I just gotta see what it looks like. Please purchase WinRAR license. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get right on that. Let's pop in another one of those games here. And we're going to... Okay, I'm going to put on my PC engine. Uh, here it is. So far, so good. Sweet. It's, something's happening. Whoa. 
All right, got my controller over here. That's crazy. I know. I wish I could... wish it was better looking for the uh, sake of filming on a thing here. <laughs> But, you know, the homebrew stuff works. Woo! Yikes. All right, I'm going to die here. And look how good, the good this looks on a PC Engine game. That's insane. This is new. I think it's neat. Uh, you can grab yours in the description below. I did not get paid for this video. In fact, I bought the items. I bought the adapter as well as these turbo chip games for myself. But while I had them... I was like, if I'm interested in it, maybe you are too. I did talk about some great TurboGrafx-16 games that you should check out, so make sure you check out that video in the meantime. Thank you so much for watching. There's always something new coming up, so I hope you're subscribed. We'll see you soon.